Annabelle Comes Home is the directorial debut of Gary Dauberman, who wrote Annabelle, Annabelle Creation, The Nun, It, and the upcoming It Chapter 2, Electric Boogaloo, but focusing on those first two movies. Yes, he wrote the Yin and Yang prequels, as I like to call them, because in the very beginning of the first Conjuring movie, you have these two <coughs> girls that turn out to be nurses, and they're terrorized by this doll that... It actually, you know, has a demonic presence latched onto it, and this demonic presence wants to possess a human body, basically wants to take it over, as one does. But with that, the doll ends up in their room, <coughs> the Warrens, and if you're unfamiliar with Ed and Lorraine Warren, they're paranormal investigators, and they have a room full of artifacts, you know, that have demonic possessions or some kind of paranormal theme to them, <coughs> and you're not supposed to touch anything. And the Annabelle doll is so goddamn bad that they actually have it in a glass case that says, warning, positively do not open. So in the beginning of this, I'm going to get into uh, spoilers a little bit later, but in the beginning of this one, we kind of see what happens and <coughs> how Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson, who were in this movie for about the first 20 minutes and then the last five. So really they're just, hey, we got these big names, we're going to put them here. And then, oh, we're going to pull the rug out from under you and we're going to show you the young actors. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing as they're pretty decent. <laughs> Though, I'll get into some stupid stuff that they do a little bit later. But with this, we see how the Annabelle doll got home. It wasn't exactly a smooth ride. And then, oh, they can't just put it, you know, sit it in a chair like a normal thing. Nope, they got to put it in this glass case and everything. <laughs> and it kind of has holy, you know spiritual abilities about it you know it's like it's 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 from it's from a chapel and everything it's chapel glass so a, a demon can't get through it can't possibly get out unless somebody's stupid and decides to let it out and oh wait if you've seen the trailers yeah that's that's kind of what ends up happening now with this <laughs> once um ed and lorraine warren once patrick uh patrick wilson vera farmiga's characters leave they have their daughter judy and actually the young girl playing her actually does a pretty damn good job uh, she has, you know, she's, you know, typically awkward and everything, you know, nice enough girl, but awkward because her parents are paranormal investigators, so naturally gets made fun of a little bit, but she's got a babysitter, um, <clears throat> Mary Ellen, and I kept thinking of the line from 88 Lines About 44 Women, Mary Ellen, had a, who had a son, said, I must go, but finally stayed, but anyway, enough of that. Everything seems good, okay, babysitter, you know, has got, got, you know, um, it's gonna actually throw a surprise birthday party for Judy, and okay, everything's going good, <clears throat> and even as a boy that she likes at the local market, and as a friend that, you know, keeps kind of needling her and everything, and wanting to come over because she wants to see this stuff about the, uh, you know, about the Warrens' household, because she heard so much stuff about it, turns out she has her own meth, or her own reasons for wanting to do that, and has some methods <clears throat> for implementing those reasons a little bit later. She lost somebody, basically, is what I'm trying to say, but as you can imagine, with grief, that doesn't necessarily, um, you know, translate well to dealing with demonic forces, and demonic forces can prey on that, and that's kind of what ends up happening. Now, from there, once we got, once we got, like, <clears throat> the Annabelle doll home, it's strictly at the Warrens' house. Well, I mean, except for a few scenes, like, at school, or there's that one scene at the grocery store, but for about the last, I'd say, hour 15 Hour 10, hour 15, were mainly just focused on the Warrens' household, which isn't a bad thing. You get to focus on that room with all those artifacts and all those <coughs> things from all those cases that the Warrens had. And you get to focus, of course, on the relationship that the daughter has with the mother, even though the mother isn't there. And it turns out that Judy actually had, possesses the same type of ability to communicate with, uh, you know, spirits and see things like, you know, her mother does. So, okay... <coughs> That can come into play a little bit later. But in this room, there's a bunch of stuff. And it, they, they throw a lot of shit at you, I will say that much. There's a there's one de uh, demonic forest, called, you know, ghostly forest, the fairy man. You must pay the toll, you know, the coins on the eyes and stuff like that. You must pay the toll or he'll, ta or he'll take your soul. Basically offer him the coin. It's not like the movie The Fairy Man that they used to play on sci-fi a lot. Nope, this one was actually pretty goddamn good, <laughs> or at least this version of The Fairy Man. There's also The Bride. It's about a bride's bridal dress that if you put that on, it causes people to go violent. You know, which is a, which is a legend that's been going on for a while, actually, in var variations, and that actually comes into play a little bit later as well. But it turns out that, you know, this friend, as, as you know, any friend who has suffered from grief 
is one to do. She ends up unleashing the Annabelle doll, and because it's a demon, well, some shit really starts to go south. Now, there's some good atmospheric shots. The music is pretty good. I did like the fact that it was just centered basically around the house. But a lot of this movie, <clears throat> I don't want to say it felt very samey. Again, it was a lot closer to Annabelle Creation, which was by no means perfect, but was a pretty fun movie. There were times where I felt this thing could have done a little bit better. Now, people people were saying this was a lot closer to The Conjuring 1. I don't agree, but I'm not going to fault anybody for saying that. But with this, as things start to get worse, okay, you're not supposed to touch anything in the room. So what's the first thing this friend does? <clears throat> Mary Ellen's friend does, starts touching everything, which is exactly what you shouldn't do. And then does it a little bit later on, and it's just, it's just so goddamn stupid. But the movie overall is pretty fun. Um... It's kind of an anticlimactic, uh, you know, finish. I, I will say that much. It's not great, but it is a fun movie. It is, again, much closer to the prequel to prequel than it was to the Annabelle prequel. So in that sense, it is a worthy, you know, addition to the Conjuring Universe movies. It did not offend me. It is, qu is quite fun. So anyway, I'm going to get into spoilers for a little bit. So just so you know, if you're still watching this, after about 6.30, we're going to get into some spoilers. And by we, I mean just me. So anyway, three, two, one, and go. If you're still watching, I got some spoilers here. Um, in the beginning, as I alluded to, you know, <coughs> um, Ed and Lorraine Warren take the Annabelle doll home. And as they're going home, okay, wait, they, they have to turn her back around, even though, you know, because there's this bad accident in the tunnel. Okay, so they got this, you know, demonic doll in the back. Nothing could possibly go wrong. Oh, wait, they stall out right by a cemetery. Well, Lorraine sees the stuff, but also sees the girl um, that, you know, possessed the doll. You know, the demonic, the Satanist cult girl that was from Annabelle, was from the Annabelle prequel and also, you know, alluded to an Annabelle creation. And actually, I thought those movies tied together pretty well. And then, you know, Lorraine, like, freaks out, understandable, because the spirit shoves her husband down while he's working on the car because as spirits do but okay the whole thing is, is you know the dolls a, the dolls a, a beacon for other spirits well they put this thing in the glass case as i said and then you know mary ellen's like oh wait you know a little bit later like after <clears throat> she wants to throw the surprise party for judy she goes to the grocery store with her friend and her friend says oh you won't let me come over i'm going to tell the boy at the counter who it, that you like him which it's typical awkward stuff and everything and she says wait no okay you can come over but this friend ends up coming over and it just it just ends up being just so stupid because you know where it's going and it's like okay everything could have been everything could be prevented in a lot of horror movies if people don't make stupid decisions that that much is clear but good god it's like okay don't touch anything don't touch a goddamn thing and they and she did and she touched every goddamn thing in there. <clears throat> now, it turns out she lost her dad in a car accident. She was driving, and the grief has eaten her up, and she wants to find a way. She maybe thinks that this room is a way for her to contact him. Okay, granted, that's not the way things go. And the fact that she got these keys <clears throat> that just happened to be sitting behind this Jesus picture, she got these keys to open up, like, the five locks on that room, which maybe if a room has five locks on it, you don't want to go to it, but I digress. Okay, the Annabelle doll ends up getting released. This demon starts <clears throat> taking over everything. And the bride, as I alluded to, the one in the, you know, the killer wedding dress, she makes her appearance. Um, the fairy man makes his appearance. A bunch of, a bunch of, you know, characters, a bunch of stuff that was in, you know, was alluded to in the first movie and even in the second movie with the room are kind of, are kind of featured here. And it could possibly, you know, play off some other movies and we could probably get another one about the bride and about the fairy man and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm, and I'm sure that as long as these movies keep making money, that's probably what they're going to do. As things go on, we do end up, of course, getting this one kind of goofy, kind of goofy uh, de demon, I guess, called the Hellhound, which is like a werewolf. Um, I hope they don't do that one because that was pretty goddamn cheesy and pretty goddamn stupid. But at one point, the boy is trying to, um, the boy is trying to woo the, is trying to woo Mary Ellen. So he's, and I mean, is, 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 they call him balls because like, oh, he gets the balls on the basketball court. Get it? But anyway, he's, you know, strumming his guitar along and everything. 
Things seem to be going good. Mary Ellen's going to come down and see him. Oh, wait, nope, suddenly fog comes down. And this werewolf starts to attack him, which somehow doesn't get him, despite the fact this guy was, you know, not exactly the most athletic in the world. But there are some good scares to it, but nothing was particularly like, oh, God, you know, it's like I'm really, really scared. Like the con It's nothing like The Conjuring 2, because I love The Conjuring 2. And even Annabelle Creation scared me a little bit more. While this one was atmospheric, at times it felt a little empty, but also it felt like this one could have been cut down a little bit <laughs> because you had characters making really, really stupid decisions, including Mary Ellen's friend. You just can't have you just can't have that happen. You just can't have that happen too much because then it gets like, OK, and you get why grief eats at people and she wants to make right by her dad because she felt that it was her fault that he died in a car accident. And the bride makes her appearance and a bunch of other stuff. It almost felt a little fan service like where like, okay, hey, we threw this character out, we threw this character out, and we're just we're just gonna do that and we're gonna hey, hey, look at all these cool characters we have. Now some of it some of it did work. The stuff with the Annabelle doll did work. Um you even had the character of uh, B, who was in Annabelle Creation, and if you know know the movie, you know what I'm talking about. She was in there, and that was pretty cool. She provided some pretty good creepy moments, at least, you know, one point where she's rapping on the window. Can Annabelle come out to play? And Mary Ellen's like, I think you have the wrong house. There's no Annabelle here. And she's like, yes, she is. Um, but there were some good scares to it. I'm not going to ruin everything in it, but I will say that <laughs> a lot of the stuff, like, kind of, it, 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 it gets a little goofy at times, but it does stay pretty grounded as being a fun movie. Maybe not necessarily one of the scariest ones, but it was fun fun overall. So I'm going to say B. I'm going to say, you know, B, and there is a poll up there, or if I put it up already, just grade it. Let me know what you think in the comments, <clears throat> but let me know what you, let me know how you think this measures up to the other Conjuring movies. Do you think it's as good as Annabelle Creation? Do you think it's better? Do you think, it, it, do you, please tell me you at least think it's better than the other, and in the first Annabelle prequel. But anyway, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I am John Ritlin, and I will see you soon.